On Christmas Day of last year, the Catalina Sky Survey turned up something that turned out to be not so great of a Christmas present for planet Earth. It's called Asteroid 2024 YR4, and observations thus far show that the object has a higher chance of impact with Earth than any other asteroid that's been discovered so far. That doesn't mean that it's definitely going to collide with Earth, but NASA NASA has placed it at level 3 on the so-called Torino scale due to a particularly close approach on December 22, 2032. On that day, this asteroid is predicted to pass the Earth at a minimum distance of 0 .00001 astronomical units. Of course, an astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun, but this is still a very small number. We're talking 1,500 kilometers, and even the tiniest variation in trajectory would bring this asteroid into contact with the Earth. And if this asteroid does does indeed hit the planet, well, it's not going to be quite as serious as if, say, Apophis were to hit the Earth, but still, the consequences are going to be severe indeed, far more devastating than any single nuclear warhead in the arsenals of the most powerful militaries on the planet. So we're going to take a quick look at this asteroid, determine just how dangerous it might be, and what we can do to stop it. At about 7.15 a.m. local time on June 30th, 1908, when Tsar Nicholas I still ruled Russia in one of the remotest areas of Siberia, a most unusual event occurred. The few reindeer herders of the local Evenki people who witnessed the event, none from closer than 30 kilometers away, described seeing a fireball trailing smoke and then a flash brighter than the sun, followed by a loud noise like thunder. Those closest to the event reported being blown into the air and knocked unconscious, and their dwellings damaged or destroyed. Fortunately, because of the low population density, very few human casualties resulted, but many herds of reindeer were wiped from the face of the earth. Further afield, eyewitnesses reported seeing a large column of smoke rising high into the atmosphere. But in spite of the dramatic nature of this event, no scientific expeditions could be sent because of distractions like the First World War, the Russian Revolution, and the ensuing Civil War. It wasn't until 1921 that the Soviet Academy of Sciences first sent geologist Leonid Kulik on an expedition to the site, but it was so inaccessible he couldn't reach it. It wasn't until 1927, almost 20 years after the event, that Kulik managed to reach his goal. But even though all this time had passed, the area still bore unmistakable signs of the explosion. In his observations on this and three subsequent expeditions, Kulik described a butterfly-shaped area of destruction of approximately 2,150 square kilometers with an estimated 80 million trees knocked over. To put this into perspective, that's more than 10 times the area that's been devastated by the the Southern California wildfires thus far. But Kulik sought and failed to find physical evidence of the asteroid, probably because it was a mid-air explosion, an airburst that created all of this devastation, and later expeditions did find microparticles indicating an extraterrestrial origin, but not specific enough to determine if the object was an asteroid or a comet. Most scientists today believe that it was an asteroid that rained destruction on Siberia on that June day of 1908, and in 2016, the United Nations proclaimed June 30th as International Asteroid Day to raise awareness about asteroids and efforts at planetary defense, and appropriately so, because Asteroid 2024 YR4 would create an explosion on the same level as the Tunguska event, and if this were to happen over a populated area, the consequences would be nothing short of cataclysmic. So let's go ahead and use my favorite asteroid impact simulator just to see how bad all of this might be. 
we're going to, of course, go ahead and detonate the asteroid over New York because everybody loves to destroy New York in disaster movies. Let's go ahead and check it out. By the way, this asteroid is roughly 50 meters in diameter, much, much smaller than Apophis, but as you're going to see, the impact is still devastating. Kaboom! Just like the Tunguska event, the asteroid doesn't actually impact the ground. Instead, we're talking about an airburst 5.2 miles above New York. However, the force of the blast is 7 megatons, and in many ways, New York would be much better off if the asteroid had actually hit the ground, simply because an airburst causes a lot more damage over a much larger area. So the fireball from a 7 megaton airburst would create the most damage and inflict the most casualties. We're talking a fireball approximately 0.8 miles in diameter, at least as far as the most severe damage is concerned, with an estimated 2.248 million people being killed and another 2.95 million people receiving third degree burns. Another 4.1 million people would receive second degree burns, clothes would catch on fire within 8.2 miles of the impact, and trees would catch on fire within 21 miles of the impact. And in case you're wondering why I've suddenly switched over to miles instead of kilometers, well, it's because this particular application uses miles, so I'm just doing it in respect to the people who program the damn thing. But the fireball is not the only source of damage from a blast like this. In addition, we need to talk about about the pressure wave. We're talking a 185 decibel shock wave, which would knock down all buildings within approximately 0.9 miles of the impact, and then homes within 4.8 miles of the impact would also collapse. However, only an estimated 97 people would die from the shock wave because virtually everybody within this blast radius would be dead from the fireball already. And then we need to talk about the consequences of the wind that is even more devastating than the pressure wave. As you can see, the wind within the inner ring of the wind damage graph is the equivalent of an EF3 tornado peaking at 164 miles per hour, and the outer ring is the area that all trees would be knocked down in a distance of 5.5 miles away from the airburst. All trees within an 11 mile diameter. Now, as this asteroid is subjected to further observations and astronomers get a better idea as to what its exact trajectory is likely to be, it's very possible that it's going to be downgraded to a zero level threat in the same way that Apophis has been downgraded. But once again, I don't think that a threat level should ever be a zero for asteroids that are passing this close to our planet. Because once again, even the tiniest deviation in trajectory, which could be caused by tiny asteroids impacting the larger one, asteroids that we can't observe, asteroids that we don't know about, any projected impact like that could theoretically push a safe asteroid into a much more dangerous trajectory. And we would have very little notice if something like this were to happen at the last moment. We need to be better prepared for these sorts of things, especially when it comes to asteroids that are passing this close, like 1,500 kilometers from our planet. We're talking about an object that could create create a seven megaton explosion, well, that's too close for comfort for my taste. We need to be better prepared just in case something like this were to deviate even slightly onto a collision course at the last moment, a collision course that we would be powerless to change if we weren't properly prepared. And it really doesn't take much to be prepared for these sorts of things. Right now, NASA is doing half of what they need to be doing. Observation and early detection is indeed the key, but the other half is to have an interceptor ready to go, ready to knock one of these things off course should it become absolutely necessary. And by the way, the United Launch Alliance is working on an interceptor just like this 
this at this particular moment designed for military purposes not for asteroid defense but it could definitely be used for something like that if you're interested in that interceptor by the way i have that video linked at the end of this one but the worst thing we can do is nothing because it's a big damn sky and our coverage of that sky is still far from comprehensive if an asteroid of this size were to suddenly pop up on a collision course with an impact happening in the next few weeks we would be utterly powerless to stop it thank you very much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe and also thank you very much to new patreon members dog hole patrick evans and lids party of one thank you so much without your help this channel could not keep going and i've just added a brand new patreon exclusive video this one about the history of the first ever international space station salyut 6 that brings the number of exclusive titles in our library to 15 and you can get access to this library and other exclusive content for as little as three dollars a month if you'd like to take advantage of that all the details are in the description and please please don't forget to support digital voodoo it costs nothing to subscribe to his channel he's got about 400 subscribers right now i believe and he needs to get to a thousand please do me a favor head over to his youtube channel i've got it linked in the description and subscribe please let's help him out because he's doing all of this work for my channel for free so we need to get him to that thousand subscribers so we can get monetized as well thanks again and as always stay angry about space